There's yeah. probably going to be a product out there. It's going to be insurance for cottage transfer, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. So you get a policy that would cover the tax. Like we're going to see all this kind of stuff coming policies oh. that will cover yeah. the, the, the capital gains taxes when, when, when something like this occurs. Right. Yeah. That is so, out now. The estate plan, like a lot of people yeah. buy life insurance, insurance yeah. just yeah. to trigger the capital just, gains. In just to pay tax. for the capital gains. No kidding. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but, but how do, okay. So let's, let, let's look at this. You're 80 years old. Life insurance basically is going to be in the tens of thousands because they know yeah. your, your lifespan is probably less than 15 years. Yeah. So that's going to be tough unless you buy a wholesale policy, a whole life or a, a, a what do you call it? Term policy term, yeah. uh, when you're young. But but the problem here is, well, you got to watch this segment. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to what's happening in real estate this week. I got Conrad Zarini here with uh, Remax Escarbin and Remax Niagara, top broker in Canada. And also Brian uh, Hogbin, uh, Mission 35 Mortgages, and his team is growing. So you should check him out if you're a mortgage person. And myself, Rob Golfie with Remax, the Golfie team. We're going to talk about uh, family cottages and the impact of capital gains and tax changes that could happen. So... I, I've, I've got a I've got a client. They their parents have owned this cottage forever. They want to pass it down to their kids because they use it now. They like they're adults and they're in their like 40s and 50s and they still use it. And now like the parents are in their 80s. Like I mean, like they're not going to be able to probably afford this. Like it just. So what do they do? What do you do with this stupid tax law? Like, how do you pass down a cottage without paying taxes, guys? Like, like I think it's kind of the same as like when you have a house. Like I know yeah. uh, with my parents, you know, they put my brother and I on title before yeah. they pass, right? So then you get something called right of survivorship. So then when mom and dad pass, the title went to me and my brother, right? So yeah. same the cottage. Um, there's going to be implications on mortgage financing or things like that, depending on whether there's a if, mortgage or normal mortgage. Paid, let's say it's paid for. It's paid for. Yeah, so it's it. paid for. And, yeah. uh, you know, mom and dad golfy are going to give me the cottage, right? Then I would just say, put me on title, right? Yeah. yeah. And now that I'm on title, heaven forbid anything happens to you, it doesn't have to go through the estate, doesn't have to go through probate, all that other jazz. It just flows to who's on yeah. title. And yeah. if you're joint tenant, you you miss the whole probate. So if it's joint That's tenancy, because if it's tenants in common, then yeah. you then if it's if it's one parent and you, then it's fifty fifty, and then there will be there will be probate uh, tax on the fifty percent as it passes over to you. So yeah. that's the thing. So you want to you want to make sure that you're um, joint tenants and that you get it, and it just transfers to you. And then no uh, tax with, impl implication. Eventually, somebody yeah. down in the generations will eventually have to pay that tax if they sell uh, or something, right? Can they well, do that yeah, for the third generation? Could the third generation? I, you just keep adding. You just keep adding and adding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah they, it doesn't matter whether you like it or not. You're going on title, honey. You yeah. are owning this I, cottage. I, you know what? There's yeah. probably going to be a product out there. It's going to be insurance for cottage transfer. You know, that yeah. kind of thing. So you get a policy that would cover the tax. Like we're going to see all this kind of stuff coming policies oh. that will cover yeah. the, the, the capital gains taxes when, when, when something like this occurs. Right. Yeah. That is so, out now. The estate plan, like a lot of people yeah. buy life insurance, insurance yeah. just yeah. to trigger the capital just, gains. Just to pay tax. for the capital gains. No kidding. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. but, but how do, okay. So let's, let, let's look at this. You're 80 years old. Life insurance basically is going to be in the tens of thousands because they know yeah. your your lifespan is probably less than 15 years. <laughs> so that's going to be tough unless you buy a wholesale policy, a whole life or a, uh, what do you call it? Term policy term, yeah. uh, when you're young. But but the problem here is, is that um, like how does like like, for instance, um, like like a lot of people, middle class people own cottages well i think yeah. the, the problem too is that and we see this a lot is where mom and dad did put you know the kids on title but now you get one kid doesn't want it one kid yeah. does want it and now you've got people who are you know they're they're trying to afford their home and expenses but now i gotta kick in for the maintenance on yeah. the cottage i gotta yeah. Kick yeah. In for the yeah. property yeah. taxes and those are the things that start to add up on a secondary home because anytime you do a cottage renovation it 
I don't know why, but it seems to be a lot more expensive up there than it is down here. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> kidding, no reason. kidding. No kidding, you but know? but now they put this tax, they they heavied up on the tax even heavier uh, recently, and uh, what they were going after the rich, but the middle class, it's it's going to affect it. Like a lot of people aren't going to be able to pass their cottages on to their kids. It's it, like there's going to be like in the next ten years you're going to see a lot of cottages going up because the kids can't afford it. If they don't do what we're talking about, putting their name, put, putting mm -hmm. their name on title. Well, I think, I think one of the strategies is going to have to be like them taking out a mortgage on the cottage. Cause if they're fortunate enough to inherit a cottage, um, to take out a small mortgage on the cottage, to pay the bills between all the two or three yeah. people, then you're not selling it. You're keeping it. And I think it's actually a great way to keep the cottage in the family. If ever, that's the only thing, though. Whenever we see cottages, we get a little ugh because you've got like yeah. three, four, five, six family members that yeah. you have to appease. But yeah. if everybody can agree, take out enough money that well, everybody can pay for, you can keep it and not pay a tax on it. Well, and the other thing, too, is when you give rights, when you give ownership rights to your kids, they have rights of ownership, right? So <laughs> then there's all those other things that come. So you all better get along. <laughs> <laughs> you, better, <laughs> you better you better make sure you get a psychological well, test yeah. on your and kid. The, make sure they don't then, snap yeah. on you. And They'll they send down. No. And then they can say, we want to borrow money against the cottage. Yeah. And one guy says, I don't want to do that, man. Like that's your problem, right? Yeah, so, no kidding. You know you know yeah. how you know how many yeah. stories I hear kids like they really oh, mess yeah. up the Par the fan the parents money no. situation conrad's it right in that because we've seen situation where i didn't have money and let's say my brother did so then i borrow the money off the cottage with his consent but it's yeah. really both your debt it's both yeah. the debt and if yeah. i decide not to pay for whatever reason the other person is still on the hook so like you really oh, got to yeah. have a lot of trust in that you know it's unfortunate in those situations you <laughs> <laughs> it could be a Jerry Springer episode. Sometime. Oh yeah, no kidding, no, no, no kidding. But it's just, uh, I just find that it's a big topic right now, like with cottages and 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 investment properties. I had a guy in Oakville, five million dollar apartment complex, mm. and he said to me, "Rob, can you get rid of this by, you know, before the oh, end yeah. of June?" And I'm like. Like it's hard. Like these things that you know, you know, are, you can't do it that quick. It was like less than like we we're thirty days away from the end of June. This was like last month, and he said there's a difference of four hundred thousand dollars he would have to pay if he can get it sold before the yep. end of June versus selling it after June, and that's that's a huge freaking problem. And I, do you the, think this this the problem? Do, do you yep. think this tax situation is going to get reversed? I. Uh... They need the money. That's the problem. They, the the till is empty. They need they need this income, right? So, yeah. But the, you know what the problem is, and you know it, Rob, because you sell a lot of this stuff. They just added like that guy now will add four hundred thousand to the top of this thing, and and it's just this vicious. And that's why commercial properties in Canada are so expensive and out of the reach of people. Where in the U.S., where they have that that, that exchange, you can have an apartment mm -hmm. building and you, you have six months to redeploy it into something else commercial that you don't, that was subject to no capital gains. And that's why commercial stuff has stayed moderate. Yeah. But Canadians, they add it to the top. Like, Oh no, I got 400,000 more. I want 5.4 million now. Right. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, and it it's... just makes it un, unaffordable so people can build some wealth, but good thing in the newspaper today, I don't know if you saw it, but people's wealth really increased. And yes. it's all it's home ownership and, and a stock portfolio, but it's because Housing prices rebounded, and uh, yeah, the the wealth uh, of people that own property uh, increased in Q1. So, which is uh, pretty amazing because that's yeah. what we do but for they, a living. <laughs> they're saying the spread. They're, they're yeah. saying the spread's happening even bigger now with uh, the wealthier versus, uh, I guess, middle class or whatever. But uh, I, yeah, I, I read I read that this morning. So anyway, so the key thing is Conrad is the, the kid. The kids got to get that house under their name. Otherwise, yeah. it, it it's going to save them tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. if they yeah. don't and do even it. Probate joint tenancy. They have to be joint tenants. Yeah, joint totally. tenancy. Yeah, joint tenancy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sec second thing here. Uh, what what was on here? Uh, Renters Nation number of tenants in Canada hits unprecedented heights. I couldn't believe it. Sixty three percent. In, in is it Montreal or just Quebec alone um, are renters mm -hmm. yeah like is that a norm over there or is that is that well it's like, funny because that market really went uh, of all the markets in Canada they you know post-covid let's say 
it really rebounded and, and it's been on it's been on fire. As a matter of fact, yeah. Remax has done extremely well in, in Quebec uh, over the last years. But what's interesting is that the renter, and it's so complicated to rent because most of the rents end, the, the tenancies end on John Baptiste Day, which is July 1st. Hmm. So all the all the tenancies turn around. So it's very cumbersome to rent. Right, because that's when the that's when the due dates are. They all come due at once, so moving and whatever. Wow. So I think a lot of people say, you know what? I'm here. I'm not going to deal with the hassle and leave me alone, and I'll just keep renewing. So yeah, very European uh, model of, of of ownership there too. Yeah. Right, because Europeans, a lot of them rent. It's just a normal yes. thing in Europe. Am I correct? Yeah, forty five percent Germany. Yeah, I would say yeah, somewhere yeah. like that in France as well. Yeah. So that's kind of the norm. It doesn't like you when you're talking to people. Some people own, some people rent. It doesn't. Nobody looks down at it at at, uh, at renters in Europe. They just that's just that's just the common normal way of life there. Yeah. And yeah. But but uh, but yeah, you're right. It it does take uh, uh just like uh, in Quebec there. But um, but I could I couldn't believe it. And 33 percent in Canada nationwide. I guess it's yep. uh our, our our renters, which is you know, but, um, which is not too bad. I mean, I get it. It's, you know, 33% is, is actually not bad, but I just couldn't believe in, uh, but you got to compare in, it to other places. Like even Italy is higher ownership and Spain, I think it's around 80, 80, like during the peak of real estate in Spain, it was like 85% owner. Wow. Wow. Yeah, like it was really, yeah. That, so, so owning an uh, investment property for someone to rent is tough out there probably. Very much so. Yeah, it's more of an ownership philosophy and mentality. So, right. yeah, every every country is kind of different. Well, and, and I would say, I was just in Argentina, maybe 15% of the population own any property. Like wow. any property. Like so, so really owning property in, in is it Montreal or just anywhere in Quebec is probably worth buying as an investment property because you got, you know, 63%. Mm. You yeah. know, renting. So, so I'm sure I'm wondering if the investment properties there are, are more expensive. Are they, you know, like I, I know Montreal, if anybody bought in Montreal, like, like mm. pre COVID, like you're like, I mean, it was the real estate was cheap in Montreal. Yes, it was. Yeah. Definitely. Like I yeah. couldn't believe it. Like, you know, cause the Montreal numbers started coming out after they started implementing, uh, what, what was that? That vacant tax or the, yeah. uh, uh mm -hmm. foreigners tax or whatever. And, and Montreal wasn't a city that got hit yet with that. And then mm -hmm. that, that's where everybody was diverting to buy real estate. But I, um, uh, I just, uh, I just, I was just astonished to see that, uh, how much it was, uh, uh I think it's um, going to grow even further. I think you're going to go to 35%, you know, like very, very, very quickly. Oh, and, for sure. And, and to, and could get as high as, you know, you know, 37%, something like that. It's going to go very quickly. And I think you're going to see more seniors are going to, you know, a lot of the seniors, you know, it's funny. There was another article that we talked about yesterday at our market update, like 50% of seniors, retirees are helping their kids buy yeah. houses. So their, 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 their estates are diminishing 50% yeah. of the population. So you got to think about where are they going to go? They're doing reverse mortgages uh, to help their kids buy houses. So eventually they're going to say to themselves, well, look, my equity is this. I'm going to, I'm going to cash out and I'm going to rent. I'm going to rent. And the, that's what builders are building now too. Like CMHC yeah. is funding apartment stock. So when we see these 10, 25 unit or 25 story apartment buildings, of course, we're going to have more renters because that's the supply that's going to be available. Yeah. yeah. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, you know yeah, what? Awesome. Uh, you know what? It's, hey, listen, that's a society, especially with the immigration that's coming into this country. I'm telling you, it, you're right, Conrad. Uh, you're absolutely right. It is going to go higher just because immigration right now, there's so many people that have immigrated to this country. They don't even have a house. They're living in basements of relatives and yep. friends. And they, they're looking for a place and they can't even find a place to buy or, or rent. And yeah. uh, so it is, it, you're absolutely right. It is going to increase. It's a growing area. Yeah, it is. Well, Brian can tell you too, because Brian finances people. So think about it. Look, when you read that article, it talks about like 60% of the income is going to, going to shelter, right? Well, come on, Brian, there's, you can't get anybody financing with 60%, right? <laughs> right well, you, not without equity, right? So there's not a first time home buyer that can do that. If, if total debt service ratios are at 60, you're, you're, you're renting. You can't do you're it. You're renting. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Unless yeah. you have, like to your point, Conrad, there, unless you have mom and dad gifting you 20, 25 percent down. Right. Yeah. But that's the only but, way that they're getting into the housing market right now. Hey, and real actually, estate's still a good investment. Right. So, oh, yeah. Right? Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Also investing in uh, in uh, in real estate uh, investment uh, funds. I just had somebody call me about your uh, your uh, uh, is it short capital that you have? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. Sure. I got somebody asking me about that. I'm going to give them a, a five star say, listen, deal to deal with with you guys, because I know you guys. I know you guys personally and I know you guys are are on the up and up. And and, uh, and I like your style of business and you guys are honest business people and you've been in business forever. So I definitely will uh, uh, give a high recommendation for this uh, person that's looking at investing in, in your company. So, guys, Excellent. thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks for being on. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next week. Take care, guys. Absolutely. Ciao. Yeah, picking the wrong realtor, that'd be a big mistake. That cost me money. Hi, Rob here. And hey, we get it. We get that the right realtor makes all the difference. My advice, talk to three realtors, including one from the Golfy team. Compare and you'll see no one gets results like Golfy because of the millions we invest in marketing, getting you the most money in the least amount of time. The Golfy team, Golfy gets it. Sold. Pick the right realtor. Just Google Golfie.